गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई सेल्फ अर्चना निशान गंधारकर असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सीके ठाकुर कॉलेज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग द वन इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दैट इज द स्टार्टअप कल्चर्स नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द स्टार्टअप कल्चर्स वी हैव टू चेक द कंटेंट ऑफ द टूडेज टॉपिक फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्शन डेफिनेशन ऑफ द स्टार्टअप कल्चर क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द स्टार्टअप कल्चर क्राइटेरिया विच वी आर गोइंग टू बी यूजिंग फॉर द चॉइस ऑफ द स्टार्टअप कल्चर examples of the microorganism that we are going to be using as a starter culture benefits of the starter culture starter culture problem and summary now food fermentation now what is the food fermentation it is a food processing technology that is utilizing the microorganism growth and metabolic activity to stabilize the food material in short we can say that ki microorganism converting the substrate into the product desired product and for this fermentation process we require the organism which is the pure and a active form of the nature so what is the definition of the starter cultures now starter cultures can be defined as the culture of microorganism usually bacterial or the fungal strain that are either pure or mix which is used to initiate the fermentation process it can be obtained either as a pure culture from a commercial laboratory or from a portion of the previously culture product now variety of the products like as a dairy product alcoholic product fish product vegetable products then the bakery products are produced by the using the microorganism so you can say that the microorganisms are producing the different kinds of the products that products in, and for that purpose we require the starter cultures so the simple definition of the starter culture is what the cultures are the microorganisms used in a food industry to produce the product which is having the standard quality under the control conditions so which control condition the suitable ph temperature pressure agitation and aeration now worldwide we are going to be using the more than the 3500 fermented food product and for this food productions we required the starter culture now next slide is about the classification of the starter cultures now number of organism like as a bacteria yeast mold these are associated with the fermentation of the foods now before the classification we have to check ki which type of the organisms are there single strain culture which is containing only the one strain of the species multi strain cultures ki where we are going to be using more than one strain or the single species multi strain mix culture where we are going to be using the different strains from the different species now there are the variety of the criteria which we are going to be using for the classification of the microorganism as a starter cultures so we can first classification on the basis of the growth temperatures so either your organisms are the mesophilic in nature or your organisms are the thermophilic in nature depending upon how they or which type of the strain they are going to be using there are the three types of the organism used as a starter culture first is a single strain culture second is the multi strain culture and third is the mix cultures now according to the type there are the four variety of the starter culture o type culture d type culture l type culture and dl type culture and according to the commercial use there are the three types of the culture either you can use the culture in a form of the liquid culture you can be use the culture in a form of the frozen culture or you can be use the culture in a form of the powder culture now next slide is about the criteria which we are going to be using for the choice of the starter cultures now we are using the starter culture for the production of the fermentation product so there has to be some criteria and whatever the organisms we are going to be using they has to meet the certain criteria so which are the criteria the culture should be not bring the any negative effect inside the food ingredients the second criteria they should be improve the flavor of the food third criteria is should be active even at a low water con concentration then this organism which we are going to be using as a starter culture should be able to inhibit other harmful microorganism they should be form the homogeneous structure and protect the stability of the product they should be well tolerated against the salt and sugar concentration and they should not enter the reaction with the other organic substances in a food and most important that is they should not cause any negative effect to disturb the health now we are going to be checking the which type of the microorganisms we are going to be using as a starter culture so there are the variety of organisms are present which we are going to be using use as a starter cultures so first example is a lactic starter cultures now lactic starter cultures there are the total 12 genera we are going to be including in a group which is called as a lactic acid bacteria 
Now there are the two classes of the lactic starter culture. One is the homolactic fermenter, and second is the heterolactic fermenter. Now lactic starter culture having tendency to produce the lactic acid by the fermentation of the carbohydrate. So those who are the homolactic fermenter, they will be only producing the lactic acid, and those who are the hetero fermentive, they are producing the lactic acid along with the lactic acid. They are producing the acetic acid, ethanol, carbon dioxide, etc. The genera which is included in a lactic starter cultures are the lactococcus, leuconostac, pediococcus, streptococcus, lactobacillus, enterococcus, aerococcus, vaginococcus, tetragenococcus, campobacterium, vigella and oncococcus. Now out of this the some organism which I have bolded that organisms we are frequently using in case of the dairy industry as well as in case of the vegetable industry. So first organism is our lactococcus. Now, in this case, several species are available, and from that several species, only the one organism is called as the Lactococcus lactis that we are going to be using in our dairy fermentations. Then, second organism is the Streptococcus. Now, Streptococcus thermophilus. These organisms we are going to be using in case of the dairy fermentation. Now, we will check the what is the characteristic of these organisms. These organisms are the gram positive in nature, having spherical to the white shape, having the approximate size. 0.7 to 0.9 micrometer in diameter. They will be exist in a pair, long chain. The cell grow at the variety of temperature. They will be growing at the 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. Some are growing at the 52 degrees Celsius, and they are the facultative anaerobic in nature. And cell can be survive at a 60 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The next organism is our lactobacillus. We know very well about the lactobacillus. Now, this lactobacillus are the heterogeneous a group of the gram positive. They are the rod shape. Usually, these organisms are the non motile in nature, non sporulating in nature, and these organisms are the facultative anaerobic in nature. Now, depending upon the species, this organism either producing the lactic acid or sometimes they are going to be producing the lactic acid, ethanol, acetic acid, and carbon dioxide. And some organism having tendency to produce the diacetyl. Now, this diacetyl we are going to be using as a uh, in enhance uh, as a product which is used in case of the enhancing the uh, aroma and the flavor of the components. Next organism which is called as a bifidobacterium, this we use as a probiotic also. Now this bifidobacterium morphologically similar to the some lactobacillus species. So previously this organism we included in a genus of lactobacillus. Now this organism we have isolated from the fecal matters of the human, animals and birds and they will be considered the beneficial for the normal health of the digestive tract. Some organism we are going to be added into the dairy products to maintain the intestinal health in a human. The best example for this is the Yakult. Next organisms are the Brevibacterium. Now, Brevibacteriums are the non-motile, gram-positive and capable of growing in a high salt and a wide pH ranges. Brevibacterium linens are used in case of the cheese ripening. Next is the Acetobacter. Now, Acetobacter acid we are going to be using in case of the acetic acid production from the alcohol. These organisms are gram-negative, aerobic, they will be rods in nature and they will be occurring in a single cells or pairs or the chain and then can be motile or non-motile in nature. Now, apart from the bacteria, some yeast and molds are there that yeast and molds also act as the uh, starter cultures. Now, these many number of yeast and the molds are important in case of the food fermentation technology. Now, these molds are actually associated with the spoilage of the food as it having the tendency to grow in any condition. They are having tendency to produce the toxin that the name of toxin is called as a mycotoxin. So, first we will check about the yeast. Now, the uh, yeast they will be using uh, useful in case of the different kinds of the fermentation food like as alcohol, bakery products. Also, it will be useful in case of the enzyme production and the production of the SCP. Also, we are going to be using yeast as an additive to impart a desirable flavor and some food. Now, in case of the yeast, we are going to be checking some example like as the Saccharomyces. Saccharomyces cerevisiae we are going to be using in a bakery product as well as we are going to be using in a production of the beer, wine, distilled liquor and the industrial alcohol. Candida utilis that we are going to be using for the production of the single cell protein. Now we will check about the molds. Now molds are associated with the food spoilage in, and they are having the tendency to the, uh, produce the mycotoxin as they will be having tendency to grow at any condition. They can tolerate the high concentration of salt, high concentration of sugar etc. 
now example of the molds we are going to be using in case of the variety of the fermented food the first example is the aspergillus oryzae now this aspergillus oryzae we are going to be using in a fermentation of the several oriental foods such as the say soy sauce and the miso even though aspergillus niger we are going to be using for the production of the citric acid gluconic acid from the sucrose penicillin roqueforti we are going to be using for the ripening of the roquefort and a blue cheese and penicillin cambaiti we are going to be using for the cambaiti cheese so these are the some microorganisms which we are going to be using as a starter culture now our next point is what is the benefit of the starter cultures ki why we are going to be using the starter culture now starter culture having the several benefits like as they will be giving the high quality control of the fermentation time they will be managing the economic process they will be reducing the hygienic risk and they will be accessing the new product which cannot be produced by the spontaneous fermentation now apart from the uh, that benefit starter culture having some problem like as strain antagonism now in case of the strain antagonism this will be associated with the mixed culture where the number of microorganism second organisms are dominating over the first organism and this is because of what because because of the they are having tendency to produce the inhibitory metabolites so how we are going to recover this problems you have to use the compatibility test of the compatibility between the two organism second is the loss of desired trait now the some microorganism they will be carrying the plasmid desired trait and they can be lose the trait during the storage subculturing and under some growth condition third problem which is associated that is the cell death and a injury so during the practical we are going to performing so many procedures so during that case also like as a freezing thawing freezing and drying rehydration organisms are get damage so how you can preserve this organism just by using the cryoprotectant then next that is problem which is associated with the starter culture is the inhibitors in a raw material so number of component like as a milk meat they will be containing the inhibiting material and this inhibiting material preventing or reducing the growth of the strain and the last problem which is associated with the starter culture is the bacteriophage or the lack of the lactic acid bacteria as we know that bacteriophages are the filtrable viruses they can be widely distributed in a environment and they can be spoil the food so number of microorganisms like as a lactobacillus streptococcus leconosta they will be having the bacteriophage against this uh, or, uh, and that we are going to be using in case of the food fermentation now what is the conclusion behind this starter cultures now in conclusion we can say that we can retain that starter cultures as a microorganism to use the initiate the procedure of the fermentation then they can be save the time they can the master process as well as obtain certain desired characteristic the choice of cultures starter uh, culture starter to be used must be product to be fermented while creating the optimum their development so by this way we can say that the starter cultures are very important in case of the fermentation food technology which will be which are giving the different variety of product having the particular characteristic quality and the consistency thank you